My name is Frank Savino, and I will be your presenter today. I am a senior technical support engineer at Click. My primary support area is end printing, as well as some Click View and Click Sense. I've been with Click now for the last two and a half years since the end printing acquisition by Click and Vizubi. And today, of course, I will, as mentioned, I will be hosting this session on fine tuning your end printing deployment. So let's get started. Today's agenda, well, we'll talk about hardware considerations around your end printing engine, ClickView, and ClickSense servers to ensure optimal performance from a hard, hardware standpoint. We'll also provide best practices and preventative maintenance information that will further enhance your end printing environment as a whole. Taken together by optimizing your hardware configuration along with best practices, we'll provide you with the information you need to deploy a finely tuned end printing environment. The result of which, of course, you'll have a great smoothly tuned uh, deployment and uh, your experience with, with end printing will be all that much more uh, enjoyable. And of course, finally, we'll, we will feature some highlights from the upcoming 17.4 release coming here in the mid-June timeframe. System requirements and resources. Here are the minimal end printing engine and server requirements. End printing engine, eight gigs of RAM. The important point here is that you do need at least two cores on the engine, one gig of RAM, Local connections are used. Remember to add engine and memory to the end printing engine. And if you're using QVP connections, you need to remember to add memory to the QV server. And of course, we'll address ClickSense as well as throughout the course of this uh, presentation today as well. Please remember the end printing server requirements are roughly the same as end printing engine. And that end printing engine and end printing server can be installed on the same or separate computers. These, of course, are minimum requirements only. For additional support information about these minimum requirements, you can visit the online help at click, help.click.com to get more information about the system requirements. We'll discuss additional system sizing considerations, of course, as we move through today's presentation. Let's begin by talking about how end printing connections interact with ClickView and ClickSense. With ClickView, there's one end printing process performed per available core per available per end printing execution. With ClickSense, there are two web processes performed per available core and per, per end printing execution. End printing will open in memory all QVWs and QVFs, depending on your click your ClickSense, used for report execution. Setting core, pro, setting core and processor affinity is not currently on the end printing roadmap. So for now, end printing will use all available system cores for each end printing execution. Note that RAM requirements will increase for each additional CPU and in-memory file size increase. Again, detailed sizing information will appear in subsequent slides in this presentation. So ClickView overview. The ClickView uh, system must meet minimal requirements or greater. A QVW, keep in mind that a QVW may expand by a factor of 10 in memory during imprinting background executions. This is dependent on complexity and performance of the QVW. Here, one end printing process is performed per available core and per, per end printing execution as mentioned. So it's really important to note that a system deficient in RAM will result in writing out to the system page file on your Windows server. The impact of this is system performance will be reduced when RAM memory is insufficient. So please allocate additional memory resources according to expected in-memory file size of your QVWs. Additionally, there's another consideration. When you decide you want to increase report production speed, you may want to increase allocated CPUs. Now, keep in mind, in our internal uh, testing, 
we found that more than 12 CPUs with ClickView will result in diminished performance. So really, there's not much uh, reason to go beyond 12. System performance may, will, will vary depending on several factors, including drive speed, existing system memory, and how quickly memory resources are consumed. For example, if several other programs are running in parallel on this computer, this too can use up your memory resources. To ensure best performance, you can use these metrics mentioned here as a guideline to ensure, and printing, to ensure RAM is sufficiently added to your imprinting engine and or click B server, depending on whether you're using local or click view and printing connections. Memory, with that, with that printing local connections, and printing executions remain on the end printing server. With that printing click QVP server connections, and printing execu executions are offloaded to the ClickV server. And I'll talk about what executions are in an upcoming slide. Make sure to allocate enough RAM to manage a possible 10 factor in memory file size growth to the end printing engine if local connections and to the ClickView server if at QVP connections. For example, a QVW is 100 megabytes in size. This may grow to as much as one gigabyte in memory. So if you have 10 100 megabyte files you can expect to that you expect to execute simultaneously, you would need an additional 10 gigabytes of RAM to support this. This in addition to standard operating system and software requirements. Now keep in mind, these are estimated numbers based on our internal testing. In memory file size may vary from system to system. <clears throat> Excuse me. So in addition to file size growth, we next wanna consider faster and printing execution speed. How do we do this? So I also want to improve speed of report execution. For example, you should consider, of course, again, adding additional cores to improve end printing performance. The information on this slide will uh, mentions how to derive the amount of RAM needed to go based on cores and anticipated in-memory RAM consumption. So let's talk about what end printing executions are. End printing, first of all, the end printing schedule is responsible for distributing the following executions. And if end printing executions are, as, are report previews, published tasks, metadata reloads, as well as on-demand and newsstand executions. Again, as mentioned earlier, end printing will use every core available and starts a qvprocess.exe for each core. So what this means is if you have 10 cores in this case, then multiply in size memory file so in, the sum of in size memory uh, file sizes by 10 to determine RAM requirement. Total RAM requirement based on cores and in memory usage is as follows. So cores times sum of in, me in RAM memory for all QVWs. Again, in, in memory file size may vary depending on design and complexity of the QVW. This is a, port, a very important point I will continue to repeat because this is uh, critical for understanding your own, uh, your own uh, environments and how to size your systems accordingly. ClickSense and imprinting. ClickSense must meet system, minimum system requirements also. Keep in mind that in this case with imprinting, a QVF my exp may expand by a factor of 20 in memory during end printing execution specifically. And here's why. End printing uses two web sessions to connect to ClickSense. A system deficient in RAM memory will result in writing off of the system page file as it will with, obviously with ClickView. Impact, an overall system performance decline will occur when RAM memory is insufficient. So you make, need to make sure that you allocate additional system resources according to expected in-memory file size of your QVFs to be used with imprinting. Further, it's the same principle with ClickSense. In order to speed up report production, we suggest increasing the allocated CPUs. 
with ClickSense is slightly different than to ClickView, more than 12 C CPUs up to 16 CPUs will result in marginally improved performance and not diminished performance. So it's a slightly better, better improvement, but beyond 16 CPUs, we found that uh, performance uh, declines dramatically. So somewhere between 12 and 16 CPUs is fine. Again, system performance impact may vary depending on drive speed allocated and consumed resources. For example, if other programs are running in parallel on this computer. Again, to ensure best performance, you can use these metrics mentioned here as a guideline to, to ensure RAM is sufficiently added to your ClickSense server. Memory with ClickSense in detail. As mentioned, and printing starts to ClickSense web connections for every available core and for each execution. So you should allocate enough RAM to manage a possible 20 factor in memory file size as mentioned again. For example, if a QVF is 100 megabytes, this may grow to as much as two gigabytes in memory. So if you have 10 100 megabyte files, you can expect to execute that you expect to execute simultaneously via printing, you would need to at least an additional 20 gigabytes of RAM. And of course, in addition to your standard operating system and software requirements. These are estimated numbers based on internal testing, by the way. In memory, file size may vary from system to system. So keep that in mind as you're, as you're, as you're uh, uh, sizing out your system. So in ClickSense, what if I want to additionally improve speed of report generation? As I mentioned, there are now two things you can do. You can increase your, your, uh, your memory allocation, and you can increase the number, total number of cores. So the formula in this case with ClickSense, you can refer to the bottom of the page here and you, of, this, of the slide. So the total recommended uh, cores in memory is the number of cores times the sum of in-memory RAM for all QBWs times two web processes. The information on this slide mentions how to derive the amount of RAM needed on, based on cores and anticipated memories. And as mentioned, these two web processes per ex and printing execution, which is different from ClickView. Our team has performed, again, our team has performed internal tests and written a white paper regarding the sizing information. This paper will be available likely in the end printing community in the coming months, so keep an eye out for that. The community links will be mentioned again at the end of today's presentation. So here's a nice easy chart that refers to the information we were talking about and summarizes everything we just mentioned, so we won't uh, need to go through all that again. But to keep in mind, there are three scenarios. And printing engine with click local QBW connections. Second scenario is and printing engine with QBP server connections. And the final scenario is and printing engine with QVF ClickSense server, so, sorry, with, M, with ClickSense server connections. <clears throat> this current chart, Summarize how to generally size your end printing engine if using local connections. Notice that the engine sizing is updated to, to, since local end printing connections are used. And the, pro, and the processing is done here on the end printing engine in this case. <clears throat> of course, you can use the same formula to size your engine when you're using local connections. So this chart summarizes how to generally size your imprinting server if using QVP server or cluster connections. Notice that the engine sizing in this case does not change. And again, you can use the same formula to size your imprinting server. Finally, this chart summarizes how to generally sense your click sense server if using imprinting sense connections. Notice that the engine sizing here also does not change since the heavy lifting is done on the, on the um, sense server. Use, the same, use this formula, which is quite different in terms of number of processes to, to size your system. 
So again, in this case, we have two MP printing processes times the number of cores times the sum of in-memory RAM. And that's your total recommended RAM allotment. The above tables is our recommendations guidelines only. And this, this information is based on internal testing performance, performance testing, pardon me. Actual configurations may vary depending on your environments. So aside from memory and CPU questions, we get this question a lot as well. Can I install ClickView and imprinting or ClickView and ClickSense on the same computer? So with ClickView and imprinting, although it will work, it is definitely not recommended. And this information is now also on the help.click.com site. This configuration generally, generally reduces performance of both your imprinting and ClickView servers immediately. So we strongly recommend running ClickView and imprinting on separate servers. By scaling out your deployment to separate to separate even further by scaling out your deployment to separate and printing engine and printing server and click view server this will even further significantly improve overall performance of your imprinting deployment so you may ask so now you may be asking if if you have deployed or are expecting deploy and printing in click sense can I install both of these on the same computer? And well, the answer is that this is not supported at all. This will immediately reduce performance of both the imprinting and ClickSense server because ClickSense will utilize all the available uh, resources on the computer and you want to avoid that. So this is, again, can't put it any plainer than this, and ClickSense and imprinting as a single server deployment are not supported on the same server. So again, by scaling out your deployment to separate imprinting engine, imprinting server, and ClickSense server, this will significantly improve your overall performance of your imprinting deployment. So to summarize the first part of our presentation today, Correctly assessing in-memory file sizes, expected number of system cores allocated for both ClickView and or ClickSense will allow you to estimate the amount of RAM needed for a hardware optimized and printing deployment. One last point before ending this section, please note that and printing system requirements and configuration information are available online to review at your convenience at these links. best practices and preventative maintenance. So at this point, you have now sized your imprinting hardware to perform optimally. But in addition to sizing your system for optimal performance, this next section will mention other important points about your imprinting processes and applications that will additionally serve to further optimize your imprinting deployment. Further, sorry, in this section, we will describe some common best practices that are widely used by many Click customers. Further, we'll describe techniques to verify your deployment and also discuss ClickView and ClickSense properties to be aware of and manage. Please note that this setup and configuration information is available online in the Click Help files as mentioned earlier in this presentation. So first, what do we want to do? We want to verify your deployment after installation. Checking the following. Click view. Did I, de did I use a dedicated imprinting service account to run imprinting services? Was a cal manually assigned to the imprinting service account? It's really important, folks, that this is adhered to strictly. Sharing the cal or sharing the imprinting service account with any other service, including ClickView services, will cause you system contention. You want to avoid that by ensuring that you have a dedicated imprinting service account and a manually assigned cal to that account. 
click sense is the end printing service count root admin on the sense server. Did I import the sense certificates using, using the dedicated end printing service account? This has been a common point of issue where, where um, if, if you haven't actually installed the sense certificates using the end printing service account on while logged on to the end printing server, then you often will get a, a purge connection error issues. So please ensure that your your uh, the, these these parts are set up correctly. Then both QV and QS. Is there a firewall? Have I opened the end printing ports described in the on di online documentation? So these are all important things to check and verify after uh, after your deployment. Next, verifying your deployment further. And we just talked about pur purge connections or preview problems. If you're seeing those, here's some other things to check and do. You should re-export your sense certificates using the sense server fully qualified name. Next, copy the exported certificates and re over to the end printing server and re-import the sense certificates using the certificate installer tool. Ensure that the imprinting service count is root admin on the sense server. For click view, ensure that the imprinting service count is dedicated and has a manually assigned production cal. It cannot be a test cal, it must be a cal from production. A click view desktop license will also work. Click view and click sense. Apply, make sure to apply port exemptions between or on each click sent, each sense and imprinting server and engine if applicable. Between and on each click view and imprinting server and engine when installed separately. Once you have ver finalized your QVS and QV Q click view and click sense configuration, next look to the following click view and click sense properties to be aware of and manage. Let's talk about conflicting tasks first. You should be aware of any potential QMC tasks, whether click view or, or click sense, that might be competing with end printing tasks. So what can you do? Simply avoid scheduling QMC tasks that reload or distribute QVWs or QVFs at the same time that you intend to manually reload connections, run end printing published tasks, or other end printing connections in order to keep things running smoothly. So why do this? To avoid contention be between resources and connection failures due to in-use QVWs or QVFs. This will mitigate end printing preview, publish tasks, and connection reload failures. And as mentioned, this will keep the system running smoothly. And that's a pretty good thing to have. So besides conflicting tasks, here are other important QV properties to be aware of, and we'll talk about the click the click sense properties shortly as well. Be aware that alternate states, sorry about that. There you go. Alternate states always when selected. This box property values and sheet and document triggers are not supported, and printing is simply not able to manage those items. So uh, those items should ideally be removed from your uh, from your click view documents. Also be aware that containers, section access, and macros can slow down or impact performance and output generation. Now let's talk about ClickSense application properties that we need to be aware of. So the following items are unsupported in terms of data rendering. Line charts, text images, tree map, filter pane, pivot table, maps, and extension objects. In fact, extension objects are not supported at all and may in fact, and often do cause metadata reloads to fail. So keep that in mind. Ideally, these extensions should again be removed completely, but we'll talk about how to do that without affecting your 
users' day-to-day -day experience in an upcoming slide. By the way, most of the above objects are supported, less the extensions to be exported as images only. They cannot be exported as table data. So that, in that sense, that is how they are not supported. So how do I deal with these unsupported items? Where applicable, where applicable in ClickView, use imprinting filters in place of triggers, or always one selected property, or in place of macros. You can use recipient distribution rather than section access to, to improve your report gener generation performance. Remove reporting objects from your containers and move them to a separate object sheet, reporting sheet. Remove extension objects from ClickView Act from ClickSense applications in this case, and only use uh, the other unsupported items and, as images only. Now, removing section access may not be an option for you. If it is, recipient distribution without section access is an excellent way to achieve additional performance enhancements if needed. Section access is slower because imprinting impersonates the section access, recip section access recipient user. This results in one separate session for each section access recipient. Now assume you have 10 separate imprinting executions for each section, section access recipient. Now, with distribution, with recipient filter distribution, a single imprinting execution session, say for 10 recipients, with recipient filters, using a recipient filter distribution process speeds up performance. But it's because rather than 10 separate executions for imprinting, you're only using a single execution. And this uses less, uh, will simply use less power uh, than, the, uh, when, than the section access method. So if it is a possibility, suggest re removing the section access and using re report recipient filter distribution process um, if, if it's possible. Otherwise, you can just leave the section access, access in and we, can, and we can certainly distribute as well. Just keep in mind the performance hit you might experience. So how, so how else can we work, work around this situation with unsupported clicky and click sense properties? Using the dedicated reporting application method this will allow you to this will allow you to improve performance of your imprinting reporting and overall experience keep, this will allow you to keep day-to-day -day user experience uninterrupted since all changes will be made in the QBF and QB and W and not in the original application so again simply copy the original application QBF or QBW and use the copy for reporting purposes only. Remove all unsupported items and properties from the cop copy and use the copied application for reporting purposes only. Lastly, you can do a binary load from the copy to the original in order to, re to update the data. So to, maintain, so to maintain and ensure your imprinting deployment is optimized, it is always a good idea to stay one half step ahead. You can do this by following the imprinting gap list available online and reviewing all release notes for each current and previous imprinting product release. This will allow you to keep up with new imprinting features as well as bug fixes and known issues. You may also reach out to your Click Account Manager to request the latest imprinting product roadmap information if it's not available or found in the release notes or in the gap list. So this concludes the first two areas of our presentation for today. And now, you have arrived. By optimizing your imprinting and related hardware, along with best practices discussed today, you are well on your way to deploying an optimized and finely tuned imprinting environment. And now, we're ready to explore what's coming in the next release of Click, Click Imprinting 17.4.
All right then. Here is imprinting 17.4. Um, first of all, I'll just start by showing you some of, let's see, the first thing I want to show you is that task executions are now available in the menu. So it's no longer hidden. It's not a, a development tool anymore. It's actually in production in imprinting 17.4. So here you can click task executions and you can actually see what's been running and going on here. Now, you might say, well, what if I'm running and I want to kill a task execution? So, yes, that is now possible. So, if I run a task and I go over now to executions, you see that it's running. Just click the link here. And here is now the abort button. And you can see that our report was, our published task is now aborted. Another really neat thing is inside of your connections, if you go to your sales demo connection, there's a really neat tool that is, is that will allow you to do the, verific the manual verification in 17.3.1 and lower automatically. So that section that we talked about is now covered by this little button here. Okay, so here we have some, some particular, some not sure the document, I may have moved the, the uh, document recently. So in any case, this will, this shows you that you, some of the items that you'll need to repair. Uh, so this is a nice and easy tool to run. Right, so if we go to another, let's just go back to a working one that I know is working. Let's go to the QVF and we'll run the verification here. This gives a good idea of what's what to expect. The QRS is reachable, so it taught, it'll tell you which ports. Uh, it'll confirm certificates and identity. So this is a really nice tool to verify your connections. Okay, so and lastly, another popular or much wanted tool is the triggers, triggers for scheduling metadata reloads. So now you can actually create a trigger. It pretty much looks the same as scheduled published task, published task triggers, but now you can do it for connections. So if we go back to your connection, click the connection you want to schedule, click on triggers, create trigger, and schedule it as, as needed. Here's what we talked about just a moment ago. So the connection verification tool, task kill, executions monitor, and scheduled metadata reloads. And so it's time for some Q&A. What if we have more than 12 cores? Uh, yeah, so just as, a, as mentioned in the, um, as mentioned in the presentation, the, uh, if, you, if you have 12 cores for your ClickView server, um, now not processes, but actual cores. So if you have more than 16, I mean, that's fine, but it will, you know, it'll diminish the performance. So you might want to consider put, and completely up to you, putting uh, ClickView or ClickSense on a, on a server that has no more than 12, 12 to 16 cores. The questions are coming in fast and furious. When does 17.4 release for Quick Click Sense? Uh, we just demonstrated today that actually 17.4 does work with Click Sense. Um, so you can use it immediately. Click Sense, support for Click Sense started with 17.2, I believe. Yeah, so does 17.4 provide transport from dev to prod. I don't believe so at the time at this time. Um, it is coming very soon. However, I, I cannot confirm if if uh, moving files from dev to prod reports from dev to prod is available at this at this point. Again, so there's a lot of questions today about 
there's a lot of questions today about uh, roadmap features and questions. So unfortunately, I don't have all that information. But um, you know, it, as I mentioned in the uh, presentation today, please reach out to your to your Click account manager, and they should will be able to help you find some of that information for you, as they are, can be in touch directly with and printing product management. Yes, there are migration tools for NSQ from 16 to 17. However, the migration tools only export from 16 the the uh, the reports, and there is a tool in 17 that allows you to import those those tools as well. And that information is built that there is documentation in the Click community com community as to how to do that. Tools for front end. So I presume in, you're referring to in Click Sense. We are actually working towards improving uh, support for on demand in Click in Click Sense. So uh, that also is coming. It, there may be some minor introduction to it in 17.4, but I can't confirm or deny it at this point. So uh, please continue to do as mentioned. You know, check the release notes, check the gaps features list as it, as they appear um, uh, for each new release of everything. Uh, yes, in order to transfer at the moment from test to prod, you do have to do a full backup and restore. Okay, Frank, I think we have time for one or two more. So good question. Is it possible to set affinity? And as mentioned in the in the uh, presentation today, it will not be pre able, we will not be able to set affinity for imprinting to use specific set of cores. That is on the roadmap but it's, it is not possible at this time. Thank you everyone for attending. We hope you enjoyed this session and uh, thank you to Frank for presenting. We always appreciate getting experts like Frank to, to share with us. We've got a nice legal disclaimer for you. And once again, everybody, thanks again and have a great rest of your day.